Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad. And I pray today that no matter what's going on in your life, that you can make up your mind to trust God. And if you did that right now, uh, then you can let go of all your worry. You can let go of all your fears. You can let go of everything that's boggling your mind. You made up your mind to trust God. And so now do just that. Now let it go. Get your popcorn, prop your feet up, and let's see what God is going to do. Is there anybody today that has a made up mind that I'm going to trust the Lord? If you got a made up mind, then you can go ahead and start smiling because the Lord shall make a way. If you have a made up mind, you can go ahead and start waving your hands because the Lord shall make a way. If you have a made up mind to trust the Lord, you can go ahead and do your dance right about now in the middle of all of your issues because the Lord will and the Lord shall come through and he comes through with the word and if your obedience matches that word uh, then good news is uh, God is about to pour you out a blessing uh, and I can't wait for you all to be the recipients of what God has for you and the truth of the matter is uh, as we get ready to praise the Lord in this worship experience called the shepherd's table uh, I need you to know that God has already orchestrated everything that you need and when you learn to hear that word and you learn to be obedient to that word, it simply reveals what God has already done. And so somebody needs to get made up in your mind, it's already done. Go ahead and praise the Lord, it's already done. Come on, praise the Lord, it's already worked out. Come on, praise the Lord, it's already in your favor. Come on, praise the Lord, he's already talked to them. Come on, praise the Lord, just like he talked to the devil in reference to Job, he already told the devil, you can't do everything you want to do, and so even though it feels like everything is messing up, God has already put parameters around what you think is going to go wrong, and so it's never going to go as bad as you think, and it's never going to be as good as you think, because he always has a way of taking it to another level, and so let's go to another level, anybody ready to help me worship, anybody ready to help me praise, come on, let's go. Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning saying thank you first and foremost, God. God, we thank you for the new life and the new breath that you breathed in us just on this morning, God. God, we say thank you for waking us up and starting us on our way, oh God, clothed in our right minds, God. God, we say thank you that we woke up in a soft bed, that we woke up with a roof over our heads, that we woke up with loved ones in our households, God. We say thank you, God. We don't take anything that you've done for us for granted. God, we say thank you for the blessings that we received just on this week, the seen and the unseen, God. We thank you for your covering and your protection. We thank you for the anointing that you've sent forth that has moved amongst the kingdom, God. God, we're asking right now for a word. God, we want to be closer to you. We want to be more like you, God. So we need a word, God. God, we need a word that will penetrate our hearts, that will penetrate our minds, that will penetrate our spirits, God. God, we need a word that is going to make us into better sheep. Lord, I'm asking that you would help me to be a better sheep. Forgive me for everything that I have done. Forgive us for everything that we have done that was not like you, God. God, we need a blessing a special blessing over the shepherd of the house. God, cover him, protect him, keep him from all hurt, harm, and danger, God. We would ask that you would extend the same blessing over his family. God, anoint the shepherd today so that the word that comes forth is the word that you want and nothing else. God, let the word that is delivered by the shepherd today Move the atmosphere, God. Let it shift something within us, God. Help us to receive the word on good soil. Forgive us for everything that we've done. And God, help us to be motivated. Help us to not be weary and well-doing, God. Help us to keep on moving one more day. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. But Walking by faith was not walking with my eyes, as the shepherd left for the one 
when he could have just kept 99. Where ego led me stray, and my pride could have brought on a demise. Though I walked through the valley, he never left my side. The shepherd is what they call him, selfless, one who guides. Just follow me, he say, as the herd move with strides. They say faith comes by hearing, and once you hear it, you must apply. Oh, faithful servant you are, to it I must oblige. Now it's my turn to search, it's my turn to try. To gather the sheep I can shepherd, and use the Lord's strength as my rod. See, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. That's on Murray's little land, in the direction of where I'm called. Welcome to the shepherd's table. It's lit. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to the Shepherd's Table. And I'm starting to wonder what I'm supposed to call this because it is indeed our DOA table. It is indeed the table in which we want you to learn how to discern the voice of the Lord, be obedient, and receive the attachments that God has for you. But we call it the Shepherd's Table because that's not always an easy lifestyle to live. And so we need some people to help us and we need to learn how to do that. So we come to the shepherd's table uh, to learn how to do that, to share our stories at the shepherd's table uh, and to encourage you who are watching the shepherd's table to seriously seek to apply what we're learning to your life so that you might begin to see all that God wants to attach to your life. And doing it is not easy. Discerning what God is saying is not easy. Being obedient is certainly not easy. That is why we give you the ABCs of living a DOA lifestyle. And as we come today, we'll be going to the O. That's crazy. We're already to the O, and I'm getting nervous as to what that then means. But God continues to give us what it is. And as I say, this is not an exercise of creativity. This is an exercise of trying to give you exactly what you need to make it through those hard times when you want to do what God is saying, but so many distractions, so many things going on that it makes it hard. The ABCs are to get you through those times. And so we started with the A, we went through the the end last week, and this week we start with the O, but we bring people to the table now to figure out what is the most impactful of the ABCs for your living of the DOA lifestyle? And again, a DOA lifestyle is that which you discern what God is saying and that you indeed are obedient to what God is saying so that he might give you all that he wants to give unto you. And as I hope everybody is learning, a DOA lifestyle is needed in every area of our lives, on your work life, in your work life, on your job, in your family, dealing with your spouse, dealing with your children, dealing with family members, on the road, in the grocery store, wherever you go, you need to learn how to live a DOA lifestyle. And it's really trying to help us to be practicing Christians, those in which God can trust no matter where they are and no matter what they're going through to get him the glory. And so we look forward to that happening for every single person uh, as we learn to do this. So today, let's talk about what we're learning, what's been most impactful. We got some more note gatherers here today, you all. Uh, and so uh, let's see, it's something about that seat over there. They bring a whole notebook. I remember Miss Stanley, she had a whole a whole notepad. And, and, and right here, uh, who was that? That was uh, Brother Ralph. He had, look, just like uh, Brother Anthony today, uh, they got their little notes folded up. Uh, and it's always the one that gets next to me. They try to act like they didn't have any notes. They try to make it real small, uh, like Ms. Belinda. Uh, but we're grateful uh, for them today. So you all, come on, start right here with you, uh, Miss Michelle Ted Edwards. Um, tell me what's been the most impactful of ABCs thus far for you? Well, um, when we started the lifestyles of a, a DOA person, mm -hmm. the ABCs, I was thinking I was comfortable. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. because I, I've lived a few years mm -hmm. and <laughs> I've learned some things over the years. So I was comfortable with asking God for the word and believing in the word and even choosing the word, even though I know I don't always choose the word. Yeah. <laughs> Denying the flesh, another struggle, but something I've accomplished um, some things and still working on. And then eating those things that will nourish me for my journey. I've learned long ago, you know, if I'm starting out on a long journey, I need to get some sleep. If I am getting ready to do a speech, I need to prepare. If I'm getting ready to do sing, then I need to not eat sugar. You know, <laughs> so I've learned those things. But then you got to face your challenge. <laughs> uh, I got somewhere. I got to yes. end. <laughs> when you said face your challenges, that's when I said, okay, he's on my street. He's on my life, killing me softly. Okay. <laughs> um, because all my life, I've been a controlled person. I like to have things in order. I like to make my lists. I like to know what's going on. Even Lisa can tell you, I will ask her, you know, if she asks me to do something, give me all the instructions ahead of time so that I'm prepared. Um, facing your challenges is being able to, to maybe prepare, but then know that things are just going to happen <laughs> and that you have to face your challenge. So that is the most impactful because all my life I've struggled with that, but I've also seen that I've accomplished those things by doing the other things, reading God's words, staying, uh, asking God the questions that I needed to ask. So I knew that I had to face a challenge as opposed to not facing a challenge. And I used an analogy of uh, football. Um, I'm the receiver and Lamar just threw me a pass. Uh -huh. <laughs> if and you're I not going to drop like some of them. <laughs> <laughs> right. If right. I keep running, I'm not going to get that ball. Right. I never, if I never turn around to receive it, mm -hmm. then the play does not go on. Right. Something can happen. Yeah, the other team can get it or it can fall to the ground and never go where it was supposed to go, or somebody else on my team can get it. Right. But I didn't fulfill the plan that God had for me. I don't grow, I don't learn, I don't become the person that God wanted me to be. I may not make attachments, I may not um, you know, be the person that God needs me to be in his plan. God's plan is gonna go on whether Michelle is here or not. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> but, God's plan is for me as well. I want the joy, the peace, and being right in God. I want all those things. And that's what I need to do. I learned long ago that's what I needed to do. That's my struggle still today. But I've had successes. And facing the challenge just reminded me, there's new ones. Don't be too content and happy where you are. Because some things are down the road and right here today that you still need to do. Awesome. Now, when we get to this F, she she could have done F better than I did F. Now that I'm listening to her uh, talk about the facing of your challenges. And that's one of the things in which uh, I'm so glad that she narrated it the way that she did. Because oftentimes, especially if we have trusted God before, if we have seen God work, we get comfortable seeing him work the way that he has worked before and thinking that everything has to be in those parameters for God to do it again. So we keep on trying to do it. Now, last time, Lord, I prayed for two days. You gave me the answer. I did what I was supposed to do, and it worked out. Now it's been three days, Lord. Now what are you doing? Uh, and it's not working out the way that it worked out the last time. What did I do wrong? You didn't do anything wrong. Every challenge is different, and that's why you have to learn how to live a DOA lifestyle over and over and over again. What you did last year is not going to work for this year. We need another cycle of discerning God's voice, being obedient, and the attachments will come. All right, face your challenge. Good, Miss Michelle Tan Edwards. Uh, you helped us today. And so come on, Brother Tony, tell me where you are. Which one has been most impactful for you? So, so for me, uh, the entire process has been revelatory. Mm -hmm. I've had revelations about each one of the letters and, and for the past year I've been going through a lot of different things in my life and so each one of the letters have allowed me to uh, see God in a different way but I think for me the most impactful has been hell leaning not on my own understanding yeah because sometimes I think I'm smarter than what I really am and I, I try to do things on my own and then I 
end up in a world of hurt one way or the other, either hurting myself, hurting someone else, and just not being able to really use God's power to, to positively impact the situation that I'm in. So um, I, you know, I ask for a word, you know, I choose that word, I've learned to hang in there, so A, B, C, H, and now, you know, really learning to lean not on my own understanding, as I said, but but really uh, believing in the word and, and, and living it, you know, actually uh, fulfilling it through obedience. It, this is just a tremendous uh, process for us, for me especially, and I've seen how I've been able to impact other people, Pastor, mm -hmm. through uh, through conversations, and it just comes out naturally because I've learned how to discern what people are saying. Because uh -huh. I use, I, you know, I let God tell me, this is what you say. This, and it's not a speech. Right. It's just one word or, or, or one thought mm -hmm. that kind of changes the, the, the condition that this person may be in. So I just thank God for the process, and uh, I'm continuing to, to grow as we go forward. All right. So lean not to your own understanding. Awesome. 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 Awesome, and leaning not to your own understanding will help you to face your challenge, right? Because oftentimes we think if we do everything right, we shouldn't have any challenges, right? So Michelle said, now hold on, God, I did everything I was supposed to do. I was prepared, I had my list, I did everything, one, two, three. Now why is this showing up and why is this happening? And sometimes that is the reason why we don't face our challenge because we're so busy trying to figure out what went wrong. Let me go back and fix what went wrong. Let me see what went wrong as opposed to facing it. And that is why you can't lean on your own understanding. And another thing about preparation, let me tell everybody this, everything for my administrative gurus, right? We want to prepare for everything, right? Uh, we want to prepare for everything. But the truth of the matter is, if you don't know what God is doing, how do you prepare for that? And so you cannot prepare for everything. That's why, everybody say it with me, a DOA lifestyle is necessary, right? Because there are going to be things that show up out of nowhere. That's what life is. Life is not predictable in such a way that you can be prepared for everything. Life is unpredictable, which is why you have to predict that I'm going to need a word. That's what you should be preparing for. I'm going to need a word. I'm going to need a word. I'm going to need... So the preparation is doing what I need to do so that whenever that happens that I'm not prepared for, I know how to get a word. Uh, and that's where we want to grow you to, right? Most of the time, if you are prepared to get a word, you don't get nervous, you don't get anxious, you might get scared, you might have a sleepless night, but you know what to do. It doesn't last long. It doesn't lead you down a the valley of the shadow of death because of what you're facing, right? Uh, and just because giants show up, you don't start doing like uh, the rest of them and said, oh Lord, shaking in my boots. No, we ready, we ready, all right? And so come on, Miss Valentine, Miss Valentine, tell me what it is uh, that has been most impactful for you. Which letter? Well, I would say A. A. All right. Start at the beginning. In the beginning was the A. Yes. You know, this DOA style, I think I've been doing this for that long time. Yeah. You know, but then when you came with the ABCs, that was a game changer. Because uh -huh. then I could look at myself and see, you know, hey, where are you when it comes to the DOA process, you know? Mm. And for me, this is a process because I can go to, through each one of these and really see myself mm -hmm. and um, apply it to my everyday life, really. But I say A because I ask God for a word for everything. You have to. I've been through so much that um, I can say, you know, God, you did this before. I'm asking you for another word now, and he comes through for me. Mm -hmm. So when I ask him for that word, then I make up my mind, I go with him. Yeah. I make up my mind to uh -huh. trust him. Uh -huh. Because I know if he's going to give me that word, and I got to obey that word, I got to trust him. Mm -hmm. I believe that he's going to come through for me. Mm -hmm. You know, as a believer, 
it's not anything that I think God can do anything. Yeah. Because I've been through the storm. Yeah. And he brought me through. Yeah. So um, you can't tell me. <laughs> uh -oh. If you ask God for that word, uh -huh. you go with that word. Yeah. You choose that word. Choose that word. That's right. Right. And I mean, today I can say the DOA process, hey, I've been following it. It works. But you know, Pastor, and I'm going off of this, sometimes you don't even realize <laughs> you go through the process and you said you've already come through, you've been through it, and you don't realize it that you made it through it. Mm -hmm. And that's why I say you you keep that microphone because you're about to help somebody real good. Now, that's why I keep on telling you it's not enough to get through a cycle of DOA. And that makes a lot of uh, us nervous just getting through one cycle, right? But the problem is when we think going through a cycle is a cycle of life. No, you get through that cycle for that issue. Uh, there's another one coming, uh, unfortunately, but fortunately at the same time, because every issue we overcome, the stronger we are, the better we are, the more testimony we have, and the more able we're able to see and do in days yet to come for the glory of God. And whenever God gets the glory, we then are the benefactors of that in some kind of way. And so as Miss um, Valentine begins to tell you all about how necessary this DOA lifestyle is and how many of us have been doing it, this is where I want you all to get it. And this is where I think you're gonna help. You said, just as I think somebody else has told me a couple of times and I get all of these conversations mixed up now um, that I've been doing this, this DOA lifestyle thing, uh, as uh, one person said, this DOA lifestyle thing. Um, but it is a, a, a discerning of the voice of the Lord, being obedient so God can attach. Uh, if you call that a thing, it is a thing. It's a lifestyle, so I guess it is a thing, right? Uh, but were you intentionally doing it before now? No. Exactly. And that's where I said she's about to help a whole bunch of us. We know how to do it, but you have to be intentional about this thing. Which means uh, that when issues come, you can't be humming and hiding. Now you have to be intentional. It, it, there's no need to worry. Don't worry about it. Don't, don't start fretting about it. Be intentional about it. You know that God speaks. So as for the word, that's where we start. Uh, and so we ask for the word and then we work our way through the process. And so intentionality is so important and consistency. So you're going to intentionally do it and you're going to consistently do it. And that's the life changer of it all. Because even Miss Michelle said, I think I've been doing this for a long time. As she said, I, I got some years in this thing. I got some skin in the game, right? I've been doing this for a while. But have you intentionally been doing it? Uh, and the more intentional you are about it, um, the more peace you have about life, right? And it's not a comfortable situation that you're trying to get to where I'm comfortable because that's the problem. When we think that we're ever going to get to a space of comfortableness or that's our objective and motive in what we're doing, it's always going to be the carpet pulled from up underneath us because you're going to have to face challenges. Let me go back through this then. Is facing challenges comfortable? Definitely not. <laughs> Definitely not. So if facing challenges is not comfortable, but would you say as you go through the DOA process, after you've been doing it, not necessarily intentionally, but you have a great experience with it, you don't really start living the DOA process as I'm looking through the ABCs and this is good too until you're willing to face your challenge because there's one thing to say I asked for the word I'm believing the word you haven't really chose the word until you face your challenge and think that the word is going to do something in the midst of the challenge which then unlocks all of the following letters right because you're not insisting on the word if you're not facing your challenge right you're not making up your mind to trust God if you're not facing your challenge and you don't even have to make up your mind to trust God if you're not facing the challenge but it's not a comfortable thing so this isn't about getting to a space where okay 
you know, I got it. I got it. You're never going to have it. And you shouldn't want to have it in the sense that I got control of everything. You're not going to have that. That's not an ability that you should want to have, nor a place that you should want to be in, because that then means you have to have all the resources for everything. You're going to have to have all the knowledge for everything. And you're going to have to know how to get everybody on board for everything. And Lord knows we can't do that. Uh, and so face your challenge. Good. Lean, not to, your own Lean not to your understanding and make up your mind to trust God so you can move accordingly. And Miss uh, Valentine said, y'all, y'all go back. Y'all go back and start at the beginning. Y'all got to make sure you ask him for that word for everything. All uh, right. Because uh, these two got a little too big for their britches. Y'all go back and start <laughs> at the beginning. Y'all trying to be all advanced. Uh, Ms. Valentine said, so y'all go on back to the beginning and start with asking for a word in everything. And that is uh, two missing pieces I hope that we get out of this is one, asking for the Lord, asking for the word what? In everything, not just when nothing is working, but in everything. When you wake up in the morning, and nothing is going wrong still. Ask for the word. And then the other thing that I want you all to get out of this conversation today is the intentionality of forcing yourself through DOA cycles. So you can face your challenge, lean not to your own understanding, but it all starts with asking for a word. So let's now get to the preaching lab and see what the old shall be today. We thank you all for coming to the shepherd's table uh, and helping us. Uh, to embrace this DOA lifestyle and better live it. I told you you weren't going to need your notes. I told you you weren't going to need your notes. Uh, and so we look forward to you joining us at the shepherd's table soon. Now let's go to the preaching lab and see what the old shall be. everybody we're now in the preaching lab and we're looking for the letter o of the abc's of living a b o a lifestyle we've made it through the a the b the c the d the e the f the g the h i j k l m n now we're at the o hallelujah uh and uh, as the little kids say it elemental p uh, we just start rushing everything together, but I want you all to slow down the L, the M, the N, and the O uh, before we even get to the P. We can't mash it all together, even though it flows like that. And if you live it like that, uh, I have no problem with it. But come on, let's get the O today. Uh, and I'm praying that you indeed need a word and that you're praying for a word and we find the word that will undergird the old for the ABCs of living this lifestyle uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Uh, and uh, we find this uh, uh, verb is coming from Paul to the church of Corinth uh, in the second letter. And it says this, remember that the person who plants few seeds will have a small crop. The one who plants many seeds will have a large crop. You should give then as you have decided, not with regret or out of a sense of duty, for God loves one who gives gladly and cheerfully. You listen, and God is able to give you more than you need so that you will always have all you need for yourselves and more than enough for every good cause. As the scripture says, he gives generously to the needy, and his kindness lasts forever. And God, who supplies seed for the sower and bread to eat, will also supply you with all the seed you need and will make it grow and produce a rich harvest for your generosity. He will always make you rich enough to be generous at all times so that many will thank God for your gifts, which they receive from us. For this service you perform not only meets the needs of God's people, but also produces an outpouring of gratitude to God. And because of the proof which this service of yours brings, 
Many will give glory to God for your loyalty to the gospel of Christ, which you profess, and for your generosity and sharing with them and everyone else. And so with deep affection, they will pray for you because of the extraordinary grace God has shown you. Let us thank God for his priceless giving. And as we get ourselves ready for the old today, we find Paul writing a letter to uh, the church in Corinth for a second coming. Uh, and as we are looking at it, what we find is that Paul is in need. Uh, and one of the hardest things about living a DOA lifestyle is when you're trying to do everything that you know to do. You're trying to be obedient to everything that God says to do. You're trying to trust God and you've made up your mind to trust God. You ask for the word. You believe the word. You chosen the word. You've denied your flesh. You're eating the word to nourish your body. You are facing your challenges. You are giving up and sacrificing so that you can go up and that God can have a chance to do things. And you are hanging on in there. You're insisting on that word and you are jogging your memory and you're juxtaposing the word and what you feel and you keep on giving God a chance and you're leaning not to your own understanding and you're making up your mind and you're moving accordingly because you're trusting God uh, and then you start narrowing the time and you're getting better at it but then there comes a time when you've done all of that and then you look around and say I'm still in need what's going on why is this so hard? What is it that's going on? Uh, and here it is, we find Paul, who is in need, but he's not talking like that. Uh, we, we find Paul who has some issues, but he's not in despair. We, we find Paul who, who finds that everything is not comfortable and everything is not plush and everything is not going the way that he wants it because he's writing from jail. Uh, and we find Paul uh, in some constraints and we find Paul still focused on what God says. We find Paul still trusting that God will do what he says he will do, uh, even though he's in the confines of a place that he wouldn't want to be in. Anybody ever been in a place that you didn't want to be in, but you still hear God telling you uh, that you need to be faithful? You still hear God pushing you to do certain things? And so today I want you to understand that even though you're going through certain things, God still expects you to stay focused on his word. And this is where the DOA lifestyle starts getting complicated uh, because if I do everything, should everything be going easier? And the answer to that is no. But uh, Paul suggests that God will supply all of your needs. And so this brings us to the letter O. And today I want to go ahead and give it to you quickly because I need to explain further how to use this one. Now, and so the letter O, everybody ready? Uh, anybody want to guess? I'm going to give you all a few seconds to guess right about now or what is the O because when we start thinking about what it is that God wants to do, uh, we're going to leave this letter uh, because this is what happens uh, when stuff starts running low. This is what happens when you start getting scared. This is what happens when you start thinking uh, that that maybe I gave too much credit to God. Maybe I'm getting a little too confident in this God thing. Maybe I'm thinking and giving a little too much to uh, this DOA process. Uh, but this is what you got to do. Everybody ready for the letter O? Uh, the letter O is this. You got to learn that in this process, you're going to have to order what you need. You have to order what you need. And so this is what I need you to understand. You got to stop trying to order what you want to make you feel better uh, by what you need to be obedient is what you're supposed to start ordering. And so as we get into this process, we start trying to order what we want. I want to feel better. I, I want some more money. I, I want them to stop treating me this way. I want them to stop talking to me this way. I want them to start doing this. I want them. Uh, but God says, this is why uh, certain times you get frustrated and you get uh, discouraged and you find yourself moving in disobedient ways because you're not getting what you want to make you more comfortable in the situation uh, because God didn't 
promise to supply any of that. What God promises is to supply your needs. And God will suggest to you that everything that you think you need, you don't need. What you need is what is required to be obedient to the word that I hope you ask for and that I know the Lord is giving. Uh, and so when you ask for a word, uh, then God is suggesting when you are trying to be obedient and resources run low and people start acting funny, along with your money getting funny, uh, then God says, now you can order what you need uh, and I will supply your every need from my riches in glory because God doesn't have any lack and God is not unable to make a way. God can make a way out of no way and so when you order what you need, I need to understand that's for you to be obedient and so I need you today to ask yourself, what is it that I need to be obedient? Uh, not is it, what is it that I need to feel more comfortable? What is it that I need to believe God is going to come through? What is it that I need to understand this better? No, God's not promising none of that to you, but God is suggesting, uh, I gave you a word even though you don't understand. I gave you a word even though you're hurting. I gave you a word even though you're confused. I gave you a word even though it is confounding and overwhelming. Uh, and when you start trying to act according to that word, when you make up your mind to trust me and move accordingly, uh, I will then give you what you need in order to do that. Uh, and so you can stop trying to talk about how impossible it is. Uh, you can still stop trying because here it is. Uh, the problem that we often have in life is that too often we're accustomed to living in lack. We're accustomed uh, to believing that for one reason or another, lack is destined for us. I, I always knew it wasn't going to be enough. I always knew I didn't have enough. I, I, mama, daddy, somebody always told me I wasn't going to ever be. Uh, and we get so used to uh, living in lack. We get so used to giving credence to the naysayers. We get so used to living in negativity because everything can't go right. Everything can go right. Everything's just not easy. Everything can go right. Everything just doesn't show up in the right way. Uh, when you and me order stuff, uh, it doesn't mean you got the wrong thing because it comes in pieces. Uh, you just got to put the pieces together. When you order your exercise equipment, when you order whatever you order, it don't come all the way put together. And when you look at the box, you see the pretty picture and say, yes, I finally got it. Then you open it up and it's a whole bunch of pieces. Uh, it's not broken. Uh, it's not messed up. It just needs to be put together. And this is what God is suggesting to all of you today. Uh, He's going to supply your need to put everything together. And so you need to order what you need. And, you, and so to get there too often, what we want has nothing to do with what we need because we aren't trying to do what God says, but we're trying to do what makes us feel better. Uh, and so we're ordering the wrong thing. Everybody say you at the wrong restaurant. You're, you're at the wrong restaurant. You're ordering what you want, but you got to look at the menu. Thank you, somebody. Uh, you can't just go in there uh, and say, you know what, I'm at the seafood restaurant. Uh, uh, Y'all got any hamburgers? No, we don't serve hamburgers here. Uh, we are a seafood restaurant, uh, and that's where we need to get to. So just like going to a restaurant, everything is not on the menu and I need everybody to understand right about now uh, because of what you're going through everything you want is not on the menu because God is not trying to do what you want and God is not trying to give you what you want God has a plan for his glory and his glory will bless you and beyond what you want uh, he'll do things that you never knew to ask for he'll do things that you didn't even know were possible uh, and so you gotta learn how to order what's on the menu uh, and what God is serving uh, it is some things that require obedience uh, and so the only thing on the menu are the things that will help you to be obedient what do you need God is saying I'm ready to take your order uh, how may I help you uh, what will you have 
have, uh, and so you can't have whatever you want, uh, but there's something on the menu that you can choose. Uh, and so some of you all are looking around and saying, now, hold on, you're going to have to help me with this better, and I got you. Uh, uh, because sometimes you go to the restaurant and you might be there for the first time, uh, and even though you checked out the menu, you don't know what to order. Uh, and so what do you do? You bring the server over and you say, listen, uh, this is my first time here. I've never been here before. Do you have any recommendations? Uh, and I need somebody right about now. You're in a space you've never been in. You're going through some things you've never gone through. You're trying to work out this DOA process. You're living faithfully, uh, but you find yourself in some need. Uh, and so why don't you just ask God, uh, what is it that you recommend for me right about now? Uh, the Lord might tell you, I recommend some patience right about now. Uh, I recommend you don't worry right about now. Uh, I recommend that you just trust me right about now. I recommend that you just go with what I got for you. I recommend that you just let me do what I'm going to do. I recommend that you eat what I put before you, whatever it is, uh, when somebody is so well versed uh, with what it is that they have to offer, you should trust what it is that they suggest is best uh, for you. And so when you don't know what's at the restaurant, you ask the server. Uh, but maybe that doesn't work because some of us are very skeptical and we don't trust just about anybody, including God. Uh, and so if that doesn't work for you, you're not going to trust God to give you whatever it is you need because you've never seen it before. Or then look around at what others have. Y'all ever been to a restaurant and you say, mm, that looks good over there. Mm, that looks good over there. Mm. Uh, and so then when the server comes back, you say, ma'am or sir, what is that over there? That looks real good. Uh, and I need some folks just to look around uh, because as the same goes, if you get it for her, uh, he can do it for you. As he did it for him, uh, he can do it for you. If he did it for me, uh, he can do it for you. If he did it for you, uh, he can do it for me. Uh, and so what is that over there, Lord? Uh, they look so happy. What is it that's been going on? What do they have uh, over there? Uh, and God will begin to explain to you uh, what that is. Uh, and oftentimes what that is, uh, is the fact that they have a DOA lifestyle going on. Uh, and what they have ordered uh, is what they need uh, to be obedient. And so you're going to have to make up your mind uh, to order what you need to be obedient. Uh, but if that doesn't work, the last thing I suggest you do uh, is like myself. I don't want to ask a servant. I'm not trying to look around at everybody because if you look, you got to then talk. And I don't want to talk to everybody. Uh, and so uh, what you then do is look at the reviews. Look, look at the reviews before you get to the restaurant and they'll tell you. Uh, and everybody, uh, as, as the gospel according to Priscilla Burnett, everybody can't be lying. Uh, and so that's why you look at the reviews. If everybody says it's good, then I guarantee you that might be something you want to try. Uh, and so let's look at the reviews real quick. Uh, uh, that's why the psalmist says, uh, taste and see uh, that the Lord is Good. That's why the psalmist says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, uh, uh, but the Lord brings them out of them all. That's why the Lord says uh, that I will never leave you uh, nor forsake you. And so the testimony in the review is, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I have nothing to fear. Uh, that's why the review says uh, that all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord. Uh, and act according to uh, his purposes. That's why uh, Joseph gives the review uh, that what they meant for evil, uh, God meant for good. You don't know what to order. Look at the reviews. Uh, that's why Joshua says, uh, the Lord is with me because the word for Joshua was don't be afraid. Uh, be courageous uh, and move uh, according to the word of the Lord. That's why the review says, uh, the Lord will never leave you. His Love endures forever. That's why the review says uh, uh, that you ought to try Jesus. That's why the review says uh, that he'll make a way out of no way. That's why the review says uh, that he'll supply your every need. That's why the review says uh, nothing is too hard for God. That's why the review says uh, nothing is impossible with God. Uh, that's why the review says uh, that he is the resurrection and the life. That's why the review says uh, that he is the light. Uh, and he will give light to your path. That's why 
review says that all things are possible with God. That's why the review says that he's a healer. That's why the review says he's a sustainer. That's why the review says he's a miracle worker. Has anybody checked the reviews of God lately? He'll get you through. That's why the review says that he'll get you through the flood. That's why the review says he'll get you through the fire. That's why the review says he'll get you out of the lion's den. That's why the review says you won't not give up. That's that's why the review says, uh, hang on in there. That's why the review says uh, that God uh, is your all and all. That's why the review says, uh, nothing's too hard for God. That's why uh, the review says, you are to trust God until you die. That's why. Mama says, you know what? When I look back over my life and I think things over, all of my good days outweigh my bad days. And guess what? I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I won't complain. Why? Because God has been good to me more than this whole world can see. I need you to understand. You got to stop getting all worried, all messed up, all displaced, all discombobulated about what's going on. God knows what's going on. Ain't nothing catching God off guard. Uh, the problem is uh, uh, you just feel like you don't have what you need. And it's probably more that you don't have what you want more than what you need. But God says the tab is open for you, baby. The tab, the tab is open. I've already paid the price for what you need. If you order what you need to be obedient, God will open up doors and pour you out a blessing. God will open up doors and make a way out of no way. God will open up doors and do something that you never knew possible. So today, I need you to order what you need to be obedient. Order what you need to be obedient. Lord, I'm trying to, but who's going to take care of this? Order what you need. Lord, I'm trying to, but how is this going to work? Order what you need, and God will show up, and God will make a way. It'll put a smile on your face in the middle of this. I thought it was over with, but God just showed me. I, I got some resources over here. I thought it was over with, but God just showed me. They, they about to send something. I didn't even know they had it over here. Uh, just order what you need. God shall supply every single one of you. So today I'm asking, please, ma'am, and please, sir, you ought to try Jesus. Yes. Uh, and so what does that mean? If you don't know what salvation means, if you have not tried Jesus to that level where you're trusting him with your life. And the truth of the matter is uh, uh, many of us have professed that, but we're not really living that way. Yeah? Like we're really trusting him with our life because we're too busy trying to save ourselves. We're so busy trying to make sure that we have security and we're so busy trying to make sure that certain things don't happen because if that happens, it's going to take me out. Well, that's what salvation is for. No weapon formed against you shall prosper, but that allows us uh, to let go in that way. And that's why salvation is so sweet. Uh, and that's why God has promised unto us uh, that he will prepare a place for us. Uh, and that is where we want to be. And Indeed, the Bible indeed calls it heaven, uh, and indeed there is uh, an eternity that God has prepared for you, and I want it for myself. I want it for you, uh, but I can't get it for you. You have to say yes. You have to uh, open up your heart and your mind and try Jesus. And so today, if you're not saved today, if you don't know Jesus, if you don't have a real relationship with Jesus, then my prayer for you is that you would allow yourself to narrow the time between your emotional response and your godly response and give God your yes. Now, not only is it important that you uh, try Jesus, but 
you need a church home. Why do you need a church home for the very stuff that we're talking about today? It's one thing to know the Lord. It's another thing to have somebody to help you to respond accordingly to the Lord, uh, to help you to hear the Lord and for you to be obedient so you can get everything that God has for you to help you to hang on in there, to help you to be nourished for the journey ahead of you. And my name is Christopher Paul Burnett, and I would love to be your pastor, to walk with you, to talk with you, and to lead you to places you didn't even know God wants to take you. And so today, if you do not have a church home, and when I say you do not have a church home, uh, what that means is if you don't belong to a church, uh, you don't have your name on a roll, uh, or if you find yourself in a space where you feel like what you're getting here is indeed God sent, uh, then we ask you to go ahead and put in the chat box uh, that I need a new church home. I, I need a pastor. Uh, we'd be glad to get to you uh, to help you to grow until God is pleased. And so part of our growing until God is pleased is our trust in God despite. Uh, you can put whatever you want after that. Trust in God despite it. The way that we really prove that we trust God despite is through our giving. And that is what Paul was trying to get the Corinthian church to understand that despite what's going on, despite this grumpiness, despite this, despite that, despite what you have, what you don't think you have, what you feel like you lack, your giving is what opens up the door for God to give. And so as I shared last week, uh, all of our restaurants, all of our waitresses and waiters uh, are expecting uh, 18 to 20 percent gratuity on top of what it is that you're already paying. And what I need to understand is uh, that God is suggesting that whatever you give, I want you to be faithful, which means uh, whatever God says is what you should be giving. There's no law for this. Uh, God died that you might have life and life more abundantly, but also he died that you might be obedient. Uh, and so whatever it is that God is putting on your heart to give, you should give. And I understand that a tithe is 10% of everything that you have. That's the starting line, you all. Some of you all should be given that 20%. Some of you all should be given that 18%. Whatever God says is what you should be giving, because God says, uh, if you give, I'm giving it back to you. Press down, shaking together, and running over. And so the more we're able to trust God, the more we're able to see from God. And so I'm praying for your faithfulness in your giving. You see the prompts before you. You can always mail it to the church at 1601 Old Eastern Avenue, uh, Essex, Maryland, 21221. You can give online at ssame.org, or you can text to give, and that number is 844-334-1180. No matter how you give, be faithful. The last option is to show up at 1215 to one of the most powerful worship experiences that you're going to find anywhere on God's green earth and come worship with us uh, in person at 1215 and you can give in person. But however you decide to give, I pray that you are faithful. And as you are seeking to be more faithful, one of the things that will help you is the E of ABCs, and that's to eat the word. And we are ready to feed you breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day of the week. And we do so through the daily receipt. We wake up at 7 with the morning devotion. We stop at noon uh, with uh, a talk through managing your emotions, a talk through helping you to deal with life at noon. And then we conclude every day uh, with uh, intercessory prayer for whatever needs you may have, whatever needs people attached to you may have. And so you send those needs to ask and receive 2021, which is when we started doing this intercession for everybody at gmail.com, ask and receive 2021 at gmail.com. And you shall hear us praying for you at 8 p.m. every night. And so we ask that you join the daily pursuit and may the Lord bless you real good. Now unto him who's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above and beyond all you know to ask for or can imagine according to the power that works within you. To him be glory in the church according to his son Jesus Christ and all who received the blessing said amen, amen, and amen.